James Madison is headed to Georgia Southern. And James Madison, a 12-and-a-half point favorite. The total sits at 67 on this one. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. And, you know, it, it seems like a high total. Uh, but maybe maybe it shouldn't be, depending upon uh, what the turnover situation looks like in this game. It's 4 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. Plus. It's in Statesboro, so that's one thing. James Madison is 5-0 and against the spread so far this year. I mean, just a lot of love for the Dukes thus far. Georgia Southern, however, 7-2 and against the spread in their last nine games. They are 10-3 and against the spread against winning teams. They somehow find a way to fight and stay in ball games that maybe you wouldn't think that they would be able to. I look at this, I mean, James Madison entered the AP poll for the first time ever this year. Of course, this is their first year in the FBS. They are not eligible for a bowl game. They are not eligible to win the Sun Belt, and yet they are dominating the competition. Their defense has been absolutely fantastic. But even more so surprising than that is the quarterback, Todd Centio, 75% completion percentage on the year. Um, He's, excuse me, 75% last week. 394 yards and four touchdowns against Arkansas State. The defense, it, as I mentioned, incredibly dominant. Number six in PPA per drive. Uh, they're the best against the run. I mean, they, they're ranked in they're ranked number one in almost every category as far as run defense is concerned. Georgia Southern is great on offense. They're number 19 PPA per drive. That defense is putrid. I mean, number 124 PPA per drive. Calvin Trees last week. Uh, the numbers look good overall if you take out the interceptions. 359 yards passing, three touchdowns, through four picks. I mean, just it completely gives a game away. Uh, James Madison could eat in this game. Kyle, I'm going to move it over to you. There's no weakness here that I can find with James Madison. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm going to try to be um, succinct if I can. I, I have a lot of thoughts about this game. This is a really interesting one because James Madison unbeaten ATS. You get this far in the season, you're unbeaten ATS. I want to find a reason to bet against you because everybody's going to like – you know, how well you've been doing. You've been making teams money. Uh, The contrarian in me wants to bet the other side. As I looked at this game more and more, I can't bet the other side in this one. The Dukes have been an absolute machine this year. I'm not even sure that the odds makers have caught up with them yet. The two biggest strengths of this team are their run defense, like Gary said, tremendous run defense. Against the run, 1.42 yards per carry, which is just insane. Their second in rushing success rate allowed. Against the pass, James Madison hasn't been as good. They're 49th in opponent QBR. And I looked at this one really closely last night. Here I am at, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning looking at this game. And and Kyle Van Trees and Georgia Southern, I'm looking at his PFF stats. Van Trees really can't be trusted. I don't trust his decision-making at all. Closer look at his passing profile. Van Trees has three touchdowns and eight interceptions on throws between the numbers. Um, I don't like that at all. It's a guy that the center of the field is really bothering him. All the uh, the bodies in there, you're making way too many bad decisions. Um, and he has 14 turnover-worthy plays in the last four games. We've seen them turn into turnovers a lot. Um, against uh, against James Madison, I think they probably will too. You know, and James Madison, uh, opportunistic enough defense. I think Georgia Southern moves the ball in this game. I think they'll move the ball quite a bit through the air. But Van Trees is likely to make some big mistakes, and you can't afford those against this good of a team. Um, you know, Todd Santeo with that 91.0 PFF grade and 96.1 PFF grade on deep throws. I mean, just a great deep ball. His big-time throws have been insane. I cannot believe, I think the big, single biggest surprise I've had of this season is that Todd Santeo has been this amazing here after he struggled at Colorado State uh, the way he did. Great job there by him. I have two leans in this game, honestly. The first is the over. I think the over going up has made some sense. My concern with taking the over is I think Georgia Southern might move the ball a decent amount down the field and then throw a pick in the red zone, things like that. Uh, If you're having issues like Kyle Van Tree says uh, between the numbers, when things tighten up in the red zone, you usually have a lot of trouble too. So I, I don't find that to be a good look for Georgia Southern. I don't really want to bet James Madison when everybody and their brother has been making a ton of money on them, but that's the way I would lean in this game. That does absolutely make sense. Uh, We'll move it over to you, Parker, on this. I guess the only thing that you can really look at is the fact that James Madison has played the number 126 strength of schedule, Uh, but when you look at what they did against App State, when you look at what they did last week against Arkansas State, who had really been covering against everybody, 
Uh, this just looks like a fantastic football team, and you know that the guys at Colorado State have just got to be kicking themselves that they had a quarterback that was this good that they either did not know how to develop or didn't really know what to do with him, right? Yeah, I think I said that last week, and then yeah. Jay Norvell went and tried to fight the other coach or something crazy happened at halftime. So, yeah, there, there's all sorts of problems at Colorado State that maybe a really good quarterback could have uh, could have eased up a little bit. Um, Kyle, I agree with you, and I thought about this kind of in terms of the spot and in terms of the, all right, at some point the market's going to correct, right? At some point the shoe is going to drop, and, and that very well could be this game. But I do wonder if it's not kind of a case of common knowledge. Like, you know, in The Princess Bride when he's like, all right, this cup has the poison, and you know that I know that I know that you know that you know and i wonder if there's a little bit of recursiveness and kind of the understanding of hey smart betters know that you know we're gonna uh, uh, correct our value at some point maybe we overcorrect like and so it, anyway all that to say the spot is interesting to me but i do think that the the completeness of james madison as a football team and the obvious flaws of georgia southern are really going to be an issue so georgia southern is throwing the ball a ton minus 11.3 percentage points in rush rate over expected um that's seventh in, in the country in terms of most passing but they're awful on early downs, 78th and early downs EPA. They're sixth and third and fourth down success. So what that tells me is they really can't move the ball early. They rely on Kyle Vantries in third and long, third and medium situations and have been able to, to succeed there against a weak schedule. Um, James Madison is first in the nation, absolutely, in third and fourth down success allowed on defense. That's not a recipe to, to move the ball against this James Madison team. I really think that Georgia Southern's offense, which is the only redeeming factor of this team at all, is going to struggle not only to finish drives, uh, but even to create scoring opportunities. They're 29th in uh, quality possession rate, 61.4%. Uh, James Madison is third, allowing only 28.3%. So I don't believe... <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't believe that Georgia Southern is going to be able to maximize their strength against James Madison because their strength offense and specifically third down offense matches up with James Madison's strength defense, specifically third down defense. So the offense is, is moot there. I think that a, a, an over is enticing because of the quality of both offenses. But exactly like you said, I don't know that Georgia Southern can finish drives well enough at a high enough rate to um, to make this over worth it. On the flip side, James Madison's offense is relatively worse than their defense. It's their weaker unit. It's still incredible. 13th in EPA per pass, 80th in EPA per rush. They're rushing 6.0 percentage points more than the average team. That's 103rd slowest in the nation. So a lot of that rushing and efficiency is they're just committing to, we're going to try and move the ball of ground, move the ball on the ground. And we know Todd Santillo can hit you over the top um, if we need to get that kind of big strike and move the ball there. They're fifth in quality possession rate and they're fifth in field position, which I have circled because... Georgia Southern is 81st in net field position there. So um, a lot of advantages for James Madison in terms of special teams, coaching, um, and being able to move the ball through the air. Uh, I, I think that I, I like this a lot more when it opened it, I believe, 10 and a half and has moved all the way up here. But I, I still like this anything shy of two touchdowns. I think that James Madison is the bet here. Let's uh, let's make it official. Parker going to ride with the Dukes minus 12 and a half. You, you're right. It did open at 10 uh, and the total was at 64. That total now all the way up to 67. Uh, going to be a good time. I think in Statesboro, they think they've got a shot to be able to knock off James Madison. I am not totally convinced. So should be a fun game on ESPN plus on Saturday afternoon. 